Welcome to another episode of The Walk. I'm Gareth. I'm walking once again with my mate Phil and we're in Derbyshire, South Derbyshire, between the villages of Ingleby and Formarked. And um, we're coming down towards the River Trent. What we're here to find is something called Anchor Church or Anchor Church Caves. Now it's an amazing structure, but what makes it more interesting is up until very recently, it was thought to be an 18th century folly where people from the local Four Marks Hall would entertain their guests and have picnics and such like. But actually it transpires, it goes all the way back to the 9th century and was once the home of a Northumbrian king. What a beautiful evening, Phil, yeah. for a stomp, mate. Quality. So this is the River Trent that basically separates Derbyshire and Nottinghamshire. You can see the, or maybe you can, the Radcliffe on Saw power station over there. That's Leicestershire. So we're kind of pretty much at a, a, you know, a joining of sort of three counties. Now the original River Trent, because this one is, uh, has been deviated many, many years ago, actually used to come down past the site that we're coming to try and find. So actually, these Anchor Church caves were basically on the river. Hence why the, uh, the wealthy owners of, of Four Mark Hall would hang about here, basically have their picnics go in and you know, dip their feet in the river and all that gubbins. Um, but for some reason, they've deviated the river since then. I'm not entirely sure why. Um, but as I say, this dates well back um, to the 9th century to a Northumbrian king who, after several assassination attempts on his life and a battle with Ethelfrif of Mercia, because we are in fact in the Kingdom of Mercia historically, um, was deposed as the king of Northumbria and sent off, get out of here son, while we still let you. But actually, instead of fleeing far away, he fled to Mercia, so actually to the land of the people that wanted him dead. And he hid out in this under an assumed name and became a saint. Phil? I'm here. <laughs> That's pretty really awesome, isn't it, to be fair? Let's have a look at that. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not what we're looking for, but it's pretty cool. A hollow tree, look at that. Mate, I'd have loved that as a kid, knocking about in there. It's a pretty high bank, that, look. And the river's flowing pretty fast. We can hear the planes coming into East Midlands Airport. This is the sort of place you go as a kid and be gagging to put a uh, tree swing up, wouldn't it? You know what I mean? Can you imagine that? Oh, mate. Do you ever look back at things that you did as a kid, like, you know, putting a rope swing or something like that, and think to yourself, how did I not break my neck? Mate, I do that all the time. If I go back to the Isle of Wight and I see some of the places I used to knock about and I think, my goodness me, I used to jump off that and I wouldn't jump off it now. And I'm like twice the height. Who said come into yours today? Oh, mate, what is the... Why? You better turn sideways. Oh, mate. So Phil's found it. I'm still getting stung. 
um, but I can see it. Right, okay. So here we go. We are very buried. Now, as I was saying, they thought up until fairly recently, this was an 18th century folly. Um, then it transpires that actually, no, it's been dated way back to the 9th century and actually there are bits and pieces of information that link it to someone called Saint Hardolf. Now, Saint Hardolf is buried about seven miles away from here. Um, and there's a shrine and all that sort of stuff at Breeden on the hill. Then it came out that actually this Saint Hardolf is actually Eardwulf, who is this king of Northumbria. And they found a parchment, that's the term I'm using, um, that was published in about 1535. So, fairly recently. Phil, have I lost you, mate? No, it's up here, right, I'm still getting stung then. Yeah, they found a parchment that um, described the fact that this Eardwulf guy, um, the king of Northumbria, had actually not fled far, far away, but was actually hiding out in Mercia. Now, the description for where he was hiding, we found the deviation then, or rather Phil has. So this is the original River Trent. The main drag is down there, but this is the original and it's, um, you know, it smells a bit stagnant, to be honest. I don't think it's really doing much now. As I was saying, they found this parchment, this document that described where Erd Wolf, the Northumbrian king, had been hiding out and it said, in a cell, in a cave, a little from the Trent. Now when we finally find it, you'll see that actually it can't be much of a better description than that. So actually now historians are saying, well actually, not only was this not a 18th century folly, or just an 18th century folly, um, and not only did it house a hermit by the name of St. Hardolf, St. Hardolf, but actually that guy was in fact Eardwulf, the Northumbrian king. So there's lots of aliases going on. Oh my goodness me. I've literally just looked to my right there. But there's the path and I was just like, oh, oh, mate, that is a drop. Okay. Geezer didn't want to be found, did he? Now another mistake um, that was made was the name Anchor Church Cave or Anchor Church. They believed that the term anchor was a maritime term because obviously we're right on the river. But it wasn't. An anchorite was someone that basically, for whatever reason, religious, a religious reason of some description, um, locked himself away. I guess like a hermit, locked himself away in a cave or what they termed a cell um, for religious reasons. I'm not entirely sure why, but that's what they did. And they were known as an anchorite. So that is where the name comes from, Anchor Church Cave. So it's actually nothing to do with, you know, the anchor that you'd find on a boat. Go on, Phil. Okay, so this has been a bit of a bugger to find. And as my missus swears in Russian, I'm gonna do it. Nakenyes minashli. That means at last we've bloody found it. At last we've bloody found it. To put an expletive warning on it now in Russian. Here we go. It's so overgrown, I'm kind of excited for the reveal. Don't tell me that this... Well, this is not a reveal, is it? So I might have to swear again in Russian in a bit. I'm going to start swearing in Russian in a minute. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's a beautiful evening and I can see the sun reflecting on the River Trent. There's worse places for me to be. Um, this outcrop is giving me a clue. I think that's what it is, Phil. I think it's right there. So... Uh, Erdwolf's come all the way down from Northumbria. He's escaped death and he's come just for the view of the power station, look. Right. You found a notice board and I'm going to sting myself getting to it. Got steps going up into the doorway in this picture. It must be quite old, look. Oh, wow. So there we go. That's what we've come to find. An engraving done in 1745. By Thomas Smith of Derby. I'm sure Smith of Derby is significant. Yeah, you're right with pronunciation. Yeah, here we go, yeah. Exiled King Erdwolf of Northumbria. <laughs> is that how you say it? Yeah, it was the foreign speaker now. There we go. Erdwolf is remembered as St. Hardolf. 
So it's one and the same, AKA. Do you have a leaflet on your way down? You was you reading off here that said all this? It's from memory. Yeah, it did well. That's probably why I got the pronunciations wrong. Here we go. Okay. Now that picture was pretty awesome. That looks pebble dash though. I've seen houses like that on the Isle of Wight. Yeah. Oh, here we go. There's their dwarf running off. Oh, mate. That's incredible. What? Which room do you want to start off with? Oh, mate. The ensuite bathroom, please. Where's that door? So, where's the door? Yeah. Who used to say that? Shut that door. Larry Grayson. Was it Larry Grayson, was it? Generation again, that's how old I am. So there we go. So there's a picture from the late 1800s of this, and there's stairs there where Phil's just gone, and there's a door. There he is, look at that. It's like Fred Flintstone's house. Oh, mate, it's amazing. That is awesome, I'm coming in. Right. Got some graffiti. Oh, whoa. We should have brought a torch, didn't think, did we? Mm. Oh, wait, look at the ceiling. This is crazy. So this graffiti is, you know, some of this is gonna be hella old, isn't it? Oh, mate. What a view, though. Look at this, this is the window that Phil was looking out from then. Look at that. I mean, the power station's not ideal, but the river's all right. No, they don't, no, but you know. So let's have a look around then. So what other rooms have we got? You'd think so, wouldn't you? Probably. I mean, look at this. What's this? Do you think, hmm, no, is it? A, it looks like a fireplace from here, but then again, maybe people have just docked yeah, the night. And had fires there. Well, they fires. would have had windows, because you can see, look, these, that there, that's, that's had something in place, hasn't well, it? They may have had grills on in times gone by, stop you going in, you know, you never know, do you? Oh, I thought you were talking about a barbecue for a minute. This is amazing. I mean, look at it. I don't know if so this is all hand cut and all, isn't it? I don't know if the plastic bottle's original, but... All hand cut? Yeah, I guess it would have been, wouldn't it? This doesn't happen naturally, is it? No chance. Unless it has over yeah. millions of years, I don't know. This four mark family, is it, you say? For... The four mark hall oh. owners, yeah, they used yeah, to come round here. And... Into something. I wonder if that used to be a chimney, because the front here just come off, look. Oh mate, there you go, you can see the brickwork. Yeah, but... You're right. Yeah, it probably was, yeah. So I guess even though they need a chimney, if you're in there, they warm enough, wanted to keep you warm. Yeah, totally. Oh mate, people have even engraved their names like all the way up there, look. That's amazing. So I wonder what these were, separate bedrooms? Oh, you can have the big bedroom, I'll go in the little one, that's fine, I don't mind. I don't fancy mid invasion at night time around here. No, be... not ideal. But what a place, I mean, I'll tell you what, as a teenager, I'd have loved it here, knocking about a couple of beers when no one's looking. Oh, mate, right on the river. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it, like as Phil says, it's going to be midgy fest and it's going to be pretty stagnant because it's not flowing, but, oh, mate, that's incredible. What a structure. So that's us, Anchor Church Cave. Awesome, isn't it? Not bad at all. Nice and easy to get to. Nice spectacle, quite quirky, unexpected to find it when you're just having a quick stroll around the river. So yeah, decent. Sounds like you're trying to sell it, like Grand Designs. No, it's... <laughs> well, some people would like to live here. It's they? got a few period features, um, but it's awesome. And 9th century as well. I mean, I'd have loved this if it was an 18th century folly, I'd have thought it was cool. But the fact it goes back to a Northumbrian king and it's from the 9th century, if not earlier. I mean, we don't even know that, we just know that he lived here at that point. It could be even older than that, but... But how did he know this place? You know, we know where places are now. It's so simple for us in a way. How do they know if he's king of what you're saying he was? 
that he knew that 190 miles south was a, you know, a riverside hideaway. How, how did he know? Well, that's the thing, yeah. But I suppose if he was um, heir to the throne, maybe he went on Airbnb. God, I don't know, but it just makes you wonder how they used to know about these places, because this is not exactly in plain view, is it? It's not. But it's awesome. And I hope you enjoyed it too. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.